In this video, we'll be implementing camera lag very similar to the spring arm component um, so that your camera modes can have a positional lag, a rotation lag, and be able to tweak it as much as you want to achieve the camera feel that you want in your game. At first, when we're looking through Lyra, I was a little confused about Lyra's use of spring arm components, but it doesn't actually use spring arm components, but it uses camera modes. So what this allows you to do is to really specify how you want your camera to behave and where you want it to be and rotate towards uh, for each camera mode. Um, so the default camera mode is the third person camera mode. And then there's an aim down sight camera mode. And there's also a camera mode for when you die. So these camera modes come with Lyra out of the box, but it doesn't support camera lag. In this video, this is what we will implement. So essentially what we're going to do in this video is we're going to add this nice section in the Lyra camera mode for third person cameras um, so that you can implement lag the same way as you would for a spring arm component with the same properties that you may or may not be used to. Open up your project or solution in Visual Studio or Writer. Uh, in my case, it, I just called it Camera Lag Lyra, and it's just based off a fresh Lyra 5.3 install. And let's locate the two files that we'll be modifying. Um, so they're in the source folder under the Lyra game module and then the camera folder. And they're called Lyra Camera Mode Third Person, and it's the header file and the C++ file. So go ahead and open those two. Uh, my UI looks a little different because I've activated the presenter view mode. Um, so hopefully the text is just more readable. Now navigate to the URL I've provided in the video's description. And this will be the code change that we need to implement the camera lag. So first let's open up the header file. And the code I've added is surrounded by game change start and game change end. So you can go ahead and select all of this code all the way up to the game change end. And you can paste it in your header file under the crouch offset blend multiplier. These are all properties that come directly from the spring arm components properties. So back in our project, you can go ahead and open the header file and search or control F for crouch offset blend multiplier and then go ahead and paste all that code right under there. Back in the GitHub repo, you can click on camera just to go back to that folder. And you'll notice that the folder structure is the same as the projects. I kept it the same just for consistency. Um, so go ahead and click on the C++ file or the CPP file, and we'll pretty much do the same. Um, so the only modifications I've done to the updating the update view function is just do some calculation to add some lag to the camera. So in this case, it's right under the view dot field of view equals field of view. So go ahead and select from game change all the way to game end. So change game change end. Okay. And copy that. So this is also logic from uh, the spring arm component, uh, but a little bit modified because uh, we're not using a component and there's some slight differences between that. You can go ahead and compare if you're curious, uh, the logic from use spring arm component update desired arm location. Back in our project, let's open up the C++ file. And then I'm going to search control F for update view. Okay. So this is the function uh, where it determines where the camera should be and what rotation it should have right under the view dot field of view equals field of view. Uh, this is where you can paste all the code. And once that code is in, uh, I didn't have to include more headers. We can just run the project and this will open the editor. Now that the editor has opened, I'll navigate to my favorite map. So common maps, shooter gym. And for the sake of iterating with camera lag, I just made sure that the enemies can't shoot at me. So navigate to edit, editor preferences, and then Lara developer settings and turn this off. So which won't allow the player bots to attack. Now that we have our camera lag code in, 
we can tweak each camera mode individually and enable or disable camera lag. Um, so to find all the camera modes that Lyra has, uh, make sure to click on all uh, because they're all in the gameplay plugins. So you might not find them under the content folder. And you also might, if you can't see it, you might just have to click on show plugin content. Um, and they're all prefixed with CM. So CM underscore, and you'll see there's a camera mode for arena framing which in which is in the sort of bombastic uh, exploder content example um, i covered that one more in my camera mode volume video and this one is more of a static camera it just frames the whole arena and doesn't move um, and then we have the the basic third person camera which is what defaults on the player and then we have the camera for when you die and you're just floating a, a little bit. And last but not least, we have the aim down sights camera, which is when you right click. And this is an ability camera mode or a camera mode that's only active during an ability. Let's go ahead and open the third person. And now we have this nice section that shows up and it's just labeled lag. So these settings, if you compare to the spring arm component, they're exactly the same. So um, if you want to search more about the camera lag substepping, uh, you can search about what that is in the spring arm component. Uh, but what I find really useful is that you can draw debug lag markers so you can see what's happening under the hood. So I'm just going to compile and save. And one thing that you'll notice is if you open the arena framing, so this is not a child class of the third person camera. So um, you won't actually see the lag parameters or you won't actually see the lag settings. So if you have a game where you want to have um, a, a non third person camera, so let's say a, a top down camera that has some some lag and some ease in and out, uh, then you could put that logic in the camera mode itself instead of the third person camera mode. Um, I personally put it in the third person camera mode because the code of that class pretty much overrode all of the update view. And also I only needed it on my third person character. Now that we enabled the, the draw debug lag markers, um, I'll actually disable the the rotation lag because we want it to be snappy. I'm gonna compile, save. Okay, and then let's go ahead and play. Okay, so this is the same debug draw as the spring arm component. The green sphere is where your camera wants to look at, and the yellow sphere is where it is looking at. And in the middle is, is what it's trying to interpolate in between. So if I stop running, it will smoothly interpolate between the two. So I go left, I go right. And also, you know, you can notice that the distance is always the same if, if you're going pretty fast or there is a max distance. So that is actually set uh, with the camera lag max distance. Um, so if you put that really high, when you dash, you might just lose your character completely because um, that is five meters. So that is pretty far. And then the speed is, as it says, uh, how quickly the camera reaches the target position. Um, so how quickly it reaches the green sphere. And then you have your basic, do we want camera lag on this camera mode? Um, so in this case I haven't enabled it in the aim down sights so that it's way more snappy you don't want any lag when you're trying to be precise uh, so in that case if I open up my camera mode aim down sights okay and I scroll down so I haven't enabled anything of lag in this aim down sights so having the lag or using camera modes is extremely useful 
because you can really customize how you want that camera to behave depending on what mode it's in. So in my opinion, it's much better than the spring arm component. One uh, challenge or issue I found is that if you're trying to aim for enemies and you have that lag, you might actually have the reticle be on the player's head. Um, so we might need to tweak the curves a little bit. But let's say if if the camera lag wasn't on, so I'm just going to stop this and open up our third person camera. So if it was if it was disabled, save that. Then we wouldn't have that problem because it's always fixed. Um, so if you need a very responsive gameplay like this, you might you could enable lag, but like really small. Or let's go ahead and go back to what the values I had. So enabling it and drawing the markers. So what we can do is we can modify um, the target offset curve. So as it defines it, it layer has really good tooltips. Um, so it defines the local space offset from the target and it uses the view pitch to evaluate the curve. So depending on how much pitch you have, it will have specific target offsets from the, the player. So in our case, we want it to just be higher. So you might still have trouble shooting when you're looking up, but I guess you're probably shooting at someone when you're around like this pitch. This one's actually nice because you can edit curves on the fly while you're playing. Um, in my case, I forgot to open it. Um, so I'll just stop this. And then we can double click on the target offset curve. Okay, and then we can play and we can actually modify on the fly. Okay, so I'm going to uh, search or just isolate the blue curve. Um, so when and around this one is when it might be problematic. Okay, so I'm gonna just move this up. So these two points here, I'm gonna move them up. Sweet, okay, so this way, when I aim and shoot, even if I have some lag, it shouldn't matter too much. So I'm, I'm just gonna test that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So the crosshair is pretty much always free. Um, or well, not overlapping with our heads. So we're not trying to shoot through our heads somehow. Um, so I'm actually happy with this curve. Um, the one closer here could be modified. I'm finding that's another advantage of the camera mode and the way it sets its um, its target offset versus a spring arm component. So yes, now you have a way of having nice smooth camera lag to your camera and you can define it uh, per camera mode and it honestly feels smoother. If in your game you're orienting the pawn's rotation to movement and your control rotation or your camera rotation is independent from your character's rotation. Uh, what you can play with is you could also set the view control rotation to be the desired rotation. I haven't personally tested with this, but it might help smooth out uh, the rotation lag. And it's good to have that functionality that the spring arm component has, so we don't feel like we lost functionality. I found out why my character was so at the bottom left and so zoomed in is because I had a 1.3 application scale uh, just so that this video has a more readable font. Um, but what happens is um, when I go full screen, it cuts off a part of the screen. Uh, so that's why it looked all wacky. And I'm just gonna turn this back to one. Uh, but after finagling with that curve, I actually stumble upon a really nice looking camera mode for the third person character. So I, I actually like this. Here's an example with really slow lag speed. 
so it takes a while to catch up. Um, so not exactly the best uh, camera lag for a quick shooter game, but very nice and smooth. I hope that this video helps you reach the camera feel you want for your game, or at least tweak until you find it and it feels the best. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.